following his word yeah. and following the divine instructions he gives you. Yeah. I'm here to let you know somebody won't get a breakthrough. Amen. Somebody won't get a breakthrough here today. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, bless his name forever. Hallelujah. Yeah. In the first book of Kings, uh, chapter 19, pick up right from verse 12. Nineteen to twelve, first Kings. And after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a still small voice. Uh -huh. And it was so when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the end of the cave. Uh -huh. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, Now here Elijah, as you know, had fallen and had offended God. But I told you many times, it ain't about what you've done in the past. It's about what whether you are ready to make an atonement for offending God right. in the past. Amen. When God decides to bless you, He'll bless you regardless of what you've done. If you are sincere in your heart. Amen. So Elijah had offended God, as you know. Uh, Jesse got confronted him one-on-one -on -one and said, Your God or my God, uh, one of us is going to die. <laughs> And, uh, and uh, when the confrontation was made directly to Elijah, the Bible says he ran for his life. Yes. So he left away from Jezebel running. Yes. Now, God could not accept that because he was a prophet. All right, prophet. See, a prophet can't give up because things look rough. That's right. A prophet can't give up because he's faced with God or faced with death. Amen. You have to understand, even in your dimension, you got to understand you can't give up on God and you can't uh, run and turn from your responsibility in serving God. Right. In holiness, we are required to have a responsibility. And that is to reflect God's glory through instructions. If the instruction came for sister to wear a veil covering, you got to wear a veil covering. Forget about whether it's popular or not. You got to wear your dress at a proper length. Regardless of whether it's popular or not. Amen. Hallelujah. You are reflecting God. Hallelujah. And the world is noticing you. Yeah. More and more I get emails. Got another email from a sister, and she said, I see your church wearing the veil covering, and I started to well, wear the veil covering, and I'm so happy that I'm doing it, but I'm the only one in my church doing that. And I emailed her back and said, leave away from that church. Because you are a coward pastor. If he don't tell you what God says the Lord, he's a coward or he's ignorant. Either way, you're in the wrong place. So I'm saying, church, we are setting a guiding light to everyone who wants truth and righteousness. So you have an awesome responsibility and that responsibility is to stand up and defend the faith once delivered. And if you got a prayer petition before the throne and you are asking God, now listen, patience endures the man his soul. Amen. You got to wait till the Lord gets ready to bless you. Right, and you can't rush him. Amen. But what you can do, you can keep praising him and glorifying him until you keep getting his attention. And don't you know when you get God's attention long enough, God's going to stop? Yeah. Yeah. I said, wait a minute here. Yeah. Maybe I better listen to this again. Whenever you want something from God, be fervent in your worship and your praise. Let God know, I want you to hear what I'm saying. He already heard you. The more you put in glory, the more you're going to get back. Hallelujah. A person digging for gold. Yeah. He don't stop when he get a pile. Amen. He keeps no. digging. Because he don't want another pile. Amen. And you don't get three piles by digging in one pile. Amen. You got to keep after God and keep your petition before the throne. And when you are sincere in your worship and your relationship, Amen. God must bless you because he said he would. Now let me connect this with uh, 1 Chronicles 14. Now this is, is, is very important, and you have to understand, uh, again, God has a chosen people, but even the chosen people got to follow his instructions. Let's take note in chapter 14, verse 1, speak up right in verse 14. Therefore David inquired again of God, and God said unto him, Go not up after them, turn away from them, and come up upon them over against the mulberry tree. Now here... David is inquiring of God to fight against his enemies. Anytime you got a spiritual warfare, you got to have some help. Amen. You can't solve the problems of this life yourself. You've got to get caught up in the spirituality of godliness and then hear the voice of God 
gives you and give you the direction. And when you follow those directions and you got the patience to wait till God fulfills his, his promise to you, then everything's going to be all right. So I'm trying to tell you this morning, you need to get happy. Amen. After God gives you instructions, start getting happy. Because it's sure going to happen. Your blessing sure got to come. He's going to make a way for you. Hallelujah. I said he's going to perform the miracle that's needed. And some of y'all need a miracle. No, a miracle means divine intervention. And I'm trying to tell you this morning, God's going to divinely interpret your situation and act according to your petition. And God will bless you. And I'm letting you know right now when you leave here, be here rejoice and praise God because your blessing's on the way. Yes, Lord. Therefore, David inquired again of God. All right. And God said unto him, Go not up after them, turn yeah. away from them. Do, don't go in the direction you 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 got planned. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's not in your plan. It's in God's plan. Yeah. Yeah. We are the vessels of God. Yeah. So therefore, we got to do what God tells us to do. Yeah. If God say, I'm going to bless you, but then, Lord, now how are you going to bless me? Now, he gives you a set of instructions. First, I want you to praise me. Yeah. I want you to worship me. And I want you to do it with joy and gladness. Yeah. Now you may be going through and don't have your miracle, but I'm still going to come to church and worship God yeah. with joy and gladness. Yeah. You can fake worship. All right. But if it's not moving down in your soul, yeah. you're really not happy. Yeah. But if you're not happy, it means, Lord, I don't quite believe what you told me. Right. But if God told you I'm with you, yeah. I'll be with you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Even though you go through the fire, I'll be with you. Hallelujah. If you go through the water, I'll still be with you. Hallelujah. You got to understand, I got to get happy. It's not about the condition I'm in. It's about the condition I'm trying to get caught. Right? <laughs> Therefore, David, inquire to get him, God. God said to him, go not up after them. Don't go this way. Turn away from them. Uh-huh. And come upon them over against the mulberry tree. Wait now. He ain't through. And it shall be when thou shalt hear a sound of voice in the tops of the mulberry tree. Now, again, God spoke to Elijah in a still voice Amen. into his soul. Now, God is speaking to David concerning the battle that he's about to fight. And he tells him, I want you to go uh, by the mulberry tree. Yes. Now, you might say, well, Lord, why are, you, why are you doing that? That ain't necessary. It must be necessary because God told me to do it. Yeah. See, sometimes God tells you to do something because he want to find out if you want to follow the instructions. Amen. Or it may not make sense to you, but who are you? Amen. <laughs> Excuse me. Hallelujah. If God tells you to do something, if God tells you to uh, hook a puppy dog to a freight train, hallelujah, the best thing to do is look for some rope. I don't know how to help it. I'm, I'm trying to let you know if God tells you to do something, you need to do it and stop questioning God. Hallelujah. If God is you who needs the blessing, you who needs the miracle. Ain't God in the blessing business. God's in the miracle business. But he's in with somebody who will step out in faith and believe him and follow his instructions. You don't believe if you're not following his instructions. You can say you believe. But if God tells you to do something, hallelujah. Do it. He told Abraham, I want you to pack your suitcase and start walking. I will make you the father of many nations. Yes. Now, Abraham didn't say, where am I going? He just reached and got a suitcase. Hallelujah. Yes. Come on. Yes. 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 I don't know. God said, come on. The Bible said he dwelt in the tent. Hallelujah. You waiting for the glory of God to manifest itself. I'm trying to let you know when you want to hear from heaven. You better sit on your mulberry tree and wait till you hear of it. Hallelujah. Praise God for me. And it shall be. Preach. When thou shalt hear a sound of going in the tops of the mulberry tree, and then thou shalt go out to battle. You can't go out and fight until you hear that sign. Amen. Now, I hope you all ain't thinking that it's a breeze coming through the mulberry tree. God is speaking somebody. The words I speak are spirit and their light. God is trying to let you know, amen, when I come through here, it may sound like a light breeze, but it's a light thing to you. But I'm coming through here like a hurricane. Yeah. I'm going to move that mouth like a hurricane. All you got to do is make up your mind and say, Lord, what is it you want for me to do? And God told you to come to that church and praise him and to worship him. Hallelujah. And when it's a heave off and give what you have, even though you don't have it, give it anyhow. I thank God for the pledge that went out last week. Everybody made a pledge. 
from feel that pain. Hallelujah, everybody. Hallelujah, you like you want to call and 